The following interview was conducted with Roger L. Boyce, Assistant Outreach Coordinator in Physics for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Monday, November the 2nd, 2009 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome and good morning again, Mr. Boyce. Good morning. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and siblings in early years. I was born in Lafayette, uh, grew up in Warren County, uh, born August 23rd, 1944. I uh, went to a two-room schoolhouse with four grades uh, through uh, in, in Independence, which was first through uh, fourth grade, and then uh, fifth, well, I'm sorry, first through third, and then uh, the baby boomers came along and we moved to Winthrop, another two-room school, where I was in fourth and fifth, and then the baby boomers caused us to uh, consolidate to Pine Village. So I uh, finished out my uh, high school at Pine Village. Okay. Can you tell, uh, us a little bit, tell us a little bit about high school? Were there any student organizations or clubs that you belonged to? What was it uh, like? I belonged to a band, and I had my own little uh, combo. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, gee, it's uh, been so long ago. I started out in sports, but as I got up into high school, um, took too much time, and I dropped out. Okay. Um, I was uh, vice president of the junior and senior class. Very good. And I think that's it. Okay, that's fine. And then what came next, sir, after that? Um, after that, I started in Purdue, but I only went one semester, and, and uh, I was looking for a more uh, professional music scene, and mm -hmm. so I started doing that, and part-time I was working at uh, Smitty's Food Liner oh, in yes. Northwestern. We, we missed that. <laughs> yes, and I was a uh, dairy manager there. Uh-huh. Uh, I was trying to get into the Navy because I, I figured out uh, the music wasn't going to go too far, uh, but I was uh, not accepted because of rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, then I went to um, route salesman for Royal County Crown Cola. Okay. And uh, I was doing that for a number of years until 19. 65, and also playing in a band. I was working in a 12-piece rock band uh, at uh, Monticello, and we backed up Sonny and Cher. Hey, terrific. So, <laughs> Very good. Uh, so that was one highlight in, in the music business. Why, sure. Uh, then when uh, <clears throat> they escalated the Vietnam War in 1965, uh, they relaxed the uh, requirements to get in, and I got I had another physical, and this time I came back 1A, so I knew I was going to get drafted, and I joined the Air Force. Okay. I uh, spent uh, a year at, uh, after basic, I spent a year at Chinook, at Grand Till, Illinois, um, learning to be a Minuteman missile uh, electronics technician, and uh, spent the rest of my uh, duty at Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri, Nobnoster, Missouri. Okay. After discharge, uh, I was married and we just had a daughter and brought her home to see her grandparents in Lafayette. She got sick, had put her in the hospital, and took all my money. I had originally planned to go to Dallas to get a job with Collins Radio. Uh huh. Uh, but took all my money, so I had to get a job at Purdue, and I started out as a lab technician in the physics. Okay. And I was there five years, and I was uh, transferred to the lecture room in 1973, and three years later, I became the lecture room manager. Okay. What did that entail? Can you tell us a little bit about that position? That uh, required us to put together all sorts of demonstrations for uh, physics lecturers. When they came down to do a lecture, they would need certain equipment, sure. demonstrations to enhance their lecture. So anywhere from 
mechanical uh, demonstrations to electronics and optics. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had, they were mostly in components that we had to put together. Sure. Because some com they were interchangeable with uh, demonstrations. Okay, that sounds good. And then was it then what came next? Was that when you uh, took, came the outreach assistant outreach coordinator in physics? Yeah. Well, let's how'd that 80, come about? Eighty uh, seven. Uh huh. Three professors decided that uh, they were unhappy with the performance of kids coming into physics, so they thought they would uh, maybe motivate some kids by putting on a public show in the physics building and uh, on a. Saturday morning, we decided to do this show, and fortunately for me, they wanted to include me in uh, doing the show. Uh huh. Uh, so it was scheduled to start at 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning at 9:30. 285-seat uh, lecture hall was packed. <laughs> People standing out in the hallway, even outside, waiting to get in. So we. we passed the word that we would do two shows. Okay, sounds great. Oh, so, that's overwhelming. <laughs> second show was packed, so the next year we uh, automatically did two shows, and that was packed. So the third year, um, the administration decided that this was so successful, we should hire a an outreach coordinator and take it on the road. Mm -hmm. So they, they hired a fellow from North Carolina State University who was involved in outreach to uh, come and get our uh, mobile outreach program started. So his name was Chris Roddy. Uh -huh. And he was there about two years and his whole family and he kind of got homesick for North Carolina and gave notice and they looked around and said, well, who's going to continue this? So everybody looked at me and, and so I became uh, what they called the assistant outreach coordinator because I still had duties uh, in the lecture room and I don't have a formal education in physics so uh, they thought someone should have a master's degree at least okay. to run that so um, but I was that for two years and then I hired um, Dennis Harp who had a PhD from Purdue uh -huh. and he became the outreach coordinator okay so, okay Tell us a little about what your activities, and I, I read something where it said that uh, I feed off their energy. The, oh, the, yes. Yeah. Uh, it just went crazy watching the demonstrations. Uh, they were they're really neat, uh, call them gee whiz physics, and the reaction I, I get uh, from doing the demonstrations, you know, just wows them, and so their excitement, you know, just you made it exciting for me to do right. do the demonstrations. Sure. Um, did uh, tell us a little about going on the road, but mostly times it was just in the physics building. And did you have them? Year, were they year round? I'm thinking of researchers, or is it just certain times of the year you do it? Um, in the process of being the uh, outreach coordinator, um, I was belong to the American Association of Physics Teachers, uh -huh. and I was elected to be uh, a member of the. Uh, uh, science education for the public committee and I did workshops all over the country and I'd drive my van with its dedicated equipment to uh, many u universities around the country from border to border to coast to coast. And Ooh, how exciting. I'd, I'd pack stuff up and fly it out and uh, I'd do workshops so uh, um, You really got yourself early on the road, right? Right, right. <laughs> uh, so a lot of universities have used our program for, as a model to start their own physics outreach program. Wonderful. What are the age of the uh, grade of the students that you uh, that you have? K through 12. Okay. Uh, I did an abbreviated show for K through 2 because of their attention span and then from um, 3 on up to high school um, I, I preferred to do an hour but um, whatever the school needed. Sometimes they could only do 45 or 50 minutes. Right. In other words, you had them on campus, but you also went to the schools as well? Most of it was off campus. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Uh, in Indiana, as well as you say, you took it on the road, so you visited other places outside the state of Indiana? Yes, I did a number of uh, 
demonstration shows in Chicago. Uh -huh. And uh, 2005 was uh, World Year of Physics, and I was given a $10,000 grant to take it to inner city schools. So I did a number of schools in Chicago, uh, Evansville, Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, Wonderful. South Bend. Wonderful. Isn't that nice? Any uh, unusual ones that you like that, that you recall that were kind of either one way or the other or special? <laughs> They're all good, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I... Mm, Sometimes it's hard to recall those, you know? Yeah, after right. we hang up, I'll, I'll think of several. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, a couple other really... Well, yeah, I can tell you one. Good, uh, good. It was um, in the Elkhart area. I uh, can't remember now. It was Boston Middle School, I remember that, but in the area of Elkhart. Uh, some professors from Columbia University got wind uh, of my program, and they wanted to uh, come and watch it. And so they traveled from Columbia University to northern Indiana and uh, watched two shows, and then I spent about two or three hours with them uh, diagramming and writing down uh, how the demonstrations were put together and they took pictures and their their intent was to put together a program and take it to Africa. Oh. And a couple years later uh, professors from the three major universities in South Korea flew over to uh, Purdue and spent a whole day with me. Oh how nice. Uh, working up a program that uh, they were going to do a unified effort to uh, do the physics outreach in Korea. Well, very nice. Did you ever hear any follow-up? Did they touch base with you after they finally got it up and running, or did you ever hear any, you know, any further thing? No, I haven't heard oh, anything. Okay. Oh, one of these days you will. You're talking about Columbia, New York, Columbia University, in New York yeah, City. That's right. Oh, okay. Alrighty. Yeah, big uh, one. <laughs> yes. Uh, I understand you were on the Fox Morning Show. That was uh, that some about? years ago. Yeah. Uh, I was. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, they called me uh, about a day before they were in Lafayette, and uh, uh, they did a live show for FX, uh, and I guess that reached. 50. It went into 50 million homes. I'm not sure how many people watched it. Wow. That. Isn't, that, isn't that great, though? Right. Well, you always say, tune in, right? <laughs> right, right. Oh. Any of the students, do you know, that uh, you that might have uh, gone to one of these programs and ended up coming it to Purdue? We didn't really have a, a metrics system worked out to uh, find out any follow-up information. That's, no, yeah, that was one of the drawbacks, I think, that we didn't have that. Uh, sure. Because... I'm sure that we motivated kids. Oh, I'm sure you did. To be in science or to come to Purdue, but there was, right. and they didn't come forward to say, "Oh, I remember, right. remember you." And <laughs> that may still I'm that here. may still come about, though. Sometimes it's it's long afterwards. You say, "I remember." <laughs> yeah. Oh, what was the campus like when you came? It was in the '70s. Is that approximately when? It was, you, well, I uh, yeah. officially uh, came to work in ni February 1969. But uh -huh. my dad was uh, the receiving clerk at what then was called the Executive Building, now Subdi. Oh, okay. And so we lived in the country. I grew up on a farm, and, and uh, so when he came to work, came to work uh, during the summer, my brother and I would ride in and. And we'd hang out with him and then walk across town and go to the movie or sure. Sears or something like that. So I'd probably go back to about 1955. Oh, that's kind of good. So it has changed an awful lot. It's changed <laughs> tremendously. Yeah. When I came in 1969, I couldn't believe my Purdue, what had happened to it, because we had people, uh, uh, hippies hanging out in the Union and taking over Hovde and... <laughs> yeah walking around in, in dirty rags and <laughs> it was a little the unrest right right yeah right. <laughs> as they were to it right. um did you ever serve were you ever in any university committees at all like a APSAC or anything like that did you serve on any or anything in the school in the department mm, no no okay uh i th want to congratulate you on that uh, customer service award that you got from the school of science I have one a little bit bigger than that. Oh, good. Go ahead. I, I that's your, it, it, the ball's in your court. Okay. Uh, 14th of June, 1999, I got a 
award from uh, the office of the governor, Frank O'Bannon, uh, as a distinguished Hoosier. Oh, wonderful! Congratulations. Thank how you. did you, how did that come about? Was it did they give you a little advance notice or not? No. Were you really surprised? <laughs> no. Where was uh, it? At it was. Uh, I was doing a uh, summer show. We we uh, did shows for the minority engineering uh, department uh, during the summer, and they would have. A couple of groups, they would have uh, middle school kids and high school kids on two different occasions come to Purdue. And one of the shows I was doing, uh, uh, Sheila Klinker showed up and, and uh, the media was there and they gave me this award. Oh, how nice. That's really, really nice. And it's all, it's framed, isn't it, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah very yeah, good. Video <laughs> and, and all that. So I said, well, it's, uh, I, I like being a distinguished Hoosier, but I... Distinguished Boilermaker would have been a little bit safe. <laughs> you can attach that on. Anyway, yeah, that's personal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now you're stepping down and you're retiring. What are, are your, some of your plans now that uh, you've retired from Purdue? Well, I've been uh, substitute teaching. And, okay. Uh, Did you finally get you got your degree from Purdue? No. Uh, oh. You don't really need a degree to okay. be a substitute. You just okay. need a, uh, a background check and okay. pay a few dollars to, to get the license. Well, that's good. You mentioned when we, went, when we had to reschedule that you helped out in the band at uh, high school? Right, yeah. The, uh, I've been uh, subbing for the uh, band director at Clinton Central. Okay. So that's, that's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Well, that keeps your hand. Are you going to continue a little bit on with the music and things? That get, get another group going, or do you have well, decided? Well, I, I was playing in a, in a little, uh, well, like per, uh, Lafayette Citizens Band, but it's uh, Frankfurt's version. Sure, okay. Um, and I was playing uh, electric bass, but reading tuba charts, so <laughs> that wasn't much fun. And I, I'm getting arthritis in my hands. And, okay. Uh, just last week, I told the band leader, I said, I think I'm going to have to quit because it's not all that much fun, and we're not playing too much, and that's all for, we don't get any <clears throat> compensation for it. Sure. Uh, Right. What uh, instrument? What instruments do you play? Uh, I started out uh, playing French horn, and uh, when my brother graduated, uh, he played the baritone, and we didn't have a baritone player, so I switched to baritone, and I taught another student uh, or gave another student uh, lessons on French horn, so we have a French horn player. Uh huh. Uh, my senior year, we had a real cool band director come in and. He wanted to have a jazz band. They didn't have a trombone, so I played trombone. <laughs> well, you really moved around the instruments. Right. right. <laughs> and along the way, I, I, I played piano uh, in my little combo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also picked up the guitar. I, I played a couple of gigs uh, as a rhythm guitar player. And an old friend came by, and he said, uh, will you play bass for me? Well, I'd never played bass, so that picked up. I picked that up, and that's... That was my instrument. From oh, there. sounds good. You really, that's great though. And you'll keep on with that, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you have a, fav a Purdue tradition that uh, you'd like to share with us? You know, I can't think of one. Okay. Do you go to the, uh, have you gone to the athletics? Do you go to any of the sport events that we have? Not to too often, okay. only when I got free tickets. Oh, that's, <laughs> well, then that's all right. I go with that. We, yeah. need, we need people there to help us out on. <laughs> right. right. How about an outstanding event in your life? something come to mind? Uh, I, you can have more than one. I, yeah, sure. there would be many. I, I think the two, uh, two occasions when the people from Columbia and the people from South Korea came, uh, that was pretty special. Uh, of course, uh, getting married and having, having a child, that was sure. pretty special. Right. Uh, I've just uh, kind of just plugged away, I guess, right. through my life. Um, tell us about your family now. You have uh, j just one do one child, or I have uh, one child, and then I have uh, two uh, stepdaughter. Well, three. One's deceased, and uh -huh. two two stepdaughters. I have uh, eleven grandchildren and two great. Well, that's kind of, well, see, they, they need that musical accompaniment there, so I think you'll be right. busy. I'll have an orchestra going here. <laughs> oh, any, uh, any closing, any other comments or things that I may not have asked that you'd like to share with us? 
Uh, can't think of anything. Um, you're going to keep I'm in really touch. I'm enjoying retirement, at, at, but like I've heard so many other people say when they retire, they say, I don't know how I had time to work. I've got so much <laughs> stuff to do. I've heard that similar thing, too. You know, I'm so busy, it's hard to fathom it all out. Right. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to talk with you, and I hope we'll keep in touch, and okay. I want to wish you all the best in the days ahead. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye. <clears throat>